ABBA is perhaps one of the most iconic musical groups to ever bless the world. During their peak, they put out bangers among bangers, almost flipping the music industry upside down. But when it came to their live concerts, they took a somewhat unconventional approach. Hello everyone, how are you all doing? Welcome back to our channel. Do ABBA lip sync? Let's take a look into it. Number 5. The Birth of ABBA ABBA started falling together back in the 60s when Benny Anderson met Bjorn Ulvaeus. At the time, Bjorn was a member of the Hootenanny Singers, a relatively known folk music group, while Benny was a keyboard player in a popular Swedish band, The Hepstar. The two friends composed their first song in the same year they met one another and became partners. Not long after, Benny parted ways from his group, while the group Bjorn was a member of wasn't doing too well for itself. In 1969, Bjorn and Benny met two women who went on to complete ABBA. One of them was, of course, Agnetha Falzkog, who was an up-and-coming singer. The other was Annie Fried Lingstad, Frida, who was also big into music from a very early age. Number 4. People's Love for ABBA's Voice When the four members of ABBA had finally gotten in contact with one another, they mainly worked together by contributing songs, production work, backing vocals and instrumental backing. You know, all the things that make a song. 1970 was when all four of them figured that their voices went pretty well together, which gave them the idea to work together as an inseparable group. Their first few attempts at making it big failed. It wasn't until two whole years later when the band made People Need Love that they gained popularity. During this time, they referred to their group as Bjorn and Benny, Agnetha and Anifried. The fairly small success that the group achieved motivated them to work harder, so much so that they entered the 1973 Eurovision Song Contest with their original song, Ring Ring. Although they weren't able to win their performances in the contest, which is to say their songs, went on to the top charts in their country of Sweden, along with a handful of other countries on the same continent. Needless to say, people loved the sound of their voice. After that, the group changed their name to what the world calls them now, ABBA, an acronym of the members' first names. ABBA entered the Eurovision the year that came next as well and took the competition by storm with their song Waterloo. The 1974 Eurovision became the time when ABBA was propelled into fame. By the time the contest had ended, ABBA had become a household name, having hundreds of millions of fans worldwide. Before we continue, make sure to like the video and hit the subscribe button if you're enjoying it. Also press the bell icon so that you don't miss out on any of our upcoming content. Now let's get back to what we were talking about. Number 3. What was ABBA like live? People who have had the chance to attend an ABBA concert can testify regarding just how much of a blast they were. ABBA was arguably the band which made live performances a thing. Sure, many singers and groups did it way before ABBA came into the picture, but some people believe that it was ABBA that made concerts as popular as they are today. If there isn't someone to tell you about what kind of an experience attending an ABBA concert was, then well, no need to worry, as attending their Voyage concert, which is pretty much as close as you can get to being a part of an ABBA concert. Sure, one might say that it's not exactly ABBA performing, considering that holographic technology will be used to make it seem that way, but that's pretty much the only thing possible currently. Long story short, ABBA was way ahead of their time. They were a group whose live performances shall go down as the greatest live performances done by a musical group in the history of music. Number 2. Live Performances and Lip Syncing It's no lie that lip syncing during live performances is quite the norm in this day and age. Almost every modern singer or group of singers have lip synced at some point in their career, and of course received their fair share of scrutiny for it. It's pretty easy to tell when an artist is lip syncing during a live performance, or if their performance is genuine. However, this line is getting blurred by the day due to the progression in technology. But what was it like back in the day? Was ABBA also a group that partook in lip syncing? Number 1. So did ABBA lip sync? When it comes to ABBA and lip syncing, sure, it's true that the band lip synced while doing things like promotional trails or making television show appearances. The reason being that they would of course want the audience to hear a studio version when it came to things like those. Also, putting together a whole setup of backing singers and whatever it took to deliver a live performance for instances like that would be irrational. But when it came to live performances, the group always legitimately sang. Do keep in mind, they even genuinely sang a few times in TV appearances as well, which just goes on to show their wish to give the fans what they deserve. Not just that, but back in those days when ABBA was doing regular live performances, the technology wasn't as advanced as compared to today, so it would be extremely difficult, if not impossible, for singers to lip sync live. This brings us to the end of our video. Here was a deep dive into the questions regarding whether ABBA lip synced.